You can still see it now. There's bodies next door, his neighbours are dead on the lawn, just been killed, and houses are on fire, and he's just washing his car, and his two kids are running around chasing each other on a bike. And so, when you say, that, that's, that, that always stays in my mind, you know. For 70 of us, as I said, started, seven of us finished. That lucky number for me, originals. So I then joined the parachute regiment, I had a great career, you know, I was so conflict in um, Northern Ireland. Unfortunately, we lost a lot of people on that, you know. So I'd gone into this grown world now where things were real. Um, Cyprus, again, was a UN tour, believe it or not. It was supposed to be all sunshine, but the terrorists attacked while we were there, killed a number of people. So I grew through this sort of uh, military regime, and I knew at some point, it's a bit like being a football player, you know, for a Sunday league team, and you go, right, who's the top of the league? I want to be in that, that league. And I knew the SES was the best. And at the time, I, I knew they were good, but, and I can say this on any platform, the SAS are the best in the world. I've worked with Delta, the Seals, the Spetsnaz, I've worked with, with or against all of them, and we are the best in the world. So I knew that's where I wanted to go. But to get into the SAS, you have to have done at least five years service, which I've done, a number of operational tours, and then you go on selection, SAS selection, you apply to go on it. When I went on SAS selection, it was up and was I go back to B-17 again. So I'm now stood on a platform with 183 people. And again, you look at everybody, you, you always do, we all do, you go, wow, well, he looks good, he looks fitter than me, these look a lot better. 183 people, as the days went by, the number got smaller, and I started to believe in myself, and, and think, you know, I can do this. And again, at the end of it, 183 started, seven of us finished. Not lucky number seven. And then I went in to join my squadron, um, and again, we talk about memory, oh, sorry, uh, uh, mindset and image. Now, if I say to you guys here, I'm going to bring on five SAS guys, you naturally probably think six foot six, V shape, all big dudes like this guy here, yeah? And I thought the same as I went through selection, because you don't meet the SAS guys until you get there. So I'd finished selection, I was slim but fit, and I went to B Squadron, and I walk into B Squadron interest room, is where all the guys hang out. And I actually thought I'd walked into the council estate office. I'm looking around expecting all these big super fit dudes and I look around there's guys with beer bellies, bald heads, skin, I'm like, this is the SES. But what was unique about these people was what was inside their head. And I remember, right, day one, I'm looking around, there's a big guy, and he was big, he was fat, huge guy, and he's making a cup of tea. And he looks at me and he said, uh, hey Nipper, do you want to go for a run? And I went, yeah, of course I do. Anyway, we went out the front gate. I saw the sole of his sh uh, shoe for about 50 meters. I never seen him again. He left me for dust. And I got back in there and I went, it definitely ain't about the image. It's about what's between your ears. And then by day two, um, I've entered this new world. And the Sergeant Major walks in and met us on me. And he looked like cat with dog. He dares down there. He's got a rolly cigarette in his mouth. And he walks in and he goes, right. Somebody's about to get killed in a country, blah, blah, blah. We've got 48 hours to go and save them. Let's go do it. And I'm like, what the f is going on? And then he turns around and he goes, what's your name? I'm the newest guy there. And he goes, I says, Billy. And he goes, right, how are we going to do this? In front of all these S, I'm like, I haven't got a clue. So at that point, I shut my pants. I'm like, I don't know. But he says, well, tell me, what would you do? So I'll come up with an idea. And he goes, not too bad, but get everybody together now. And we put this plan together. And off we went and did this job and I was saying and I was thinking, whoa, what is this world I've just entered? It's crazy. We went out to a foreign country, we did the job, we came back, and it's just like nobody talked about it. It's like, yeah, back to normal like, what we're doing tomorrow. It's just crazy, crazy world. Jeez. Uh, so the, the mindset, that's so, what sets the SAS yeah. apart from everyone else. Yeah. And do, do you think sorry, do you think growing up where you did obviously been a bit of a tow rag, a tear away? <laughs> you have that mindset or can you be taught that mindset? I think it's difficult to teach at that sort of level, at that, that age group. It's what you, how you grow up, you know? But I think um, what set me in good stead was I had a hard bring, uh, upbringing and most of it I brought on myself the trouble. But being streetwise, knowing, you know, I wasn't academically smart, but I was kind of street smart. You know what's right and wrong. And I, I just knew I could do better than you know, or I thought I could do better than I actually could. And I wasn't afraid to go for it. And I wasn't afraid to get put on my ass and fail and get up and go again. And that mindset was ingrained from that very early age, you know. 
And then um, as, as you get into the regiment, you then sort of realise where you are. And, and everything we did in the regiment, everything was against us. We never had anything in our favour. And the biggest thing we always get against us is time. We never have enough time. But whenever we look at a problem, we always just say, right, there will be an option. There's got to be a way we can do this. And there is, and if you dig deep enough, there is. You've just got to find it, persevere with it, and go for it. And that's the same if you want to relate back to where you are now, where you're training, you want to get to a certain goal. It's hard, it's going to be tough, nothing's going to be easy, but you can do it, and you've got to go for it, and you've got to do it chunk by chunk. And then going back to your career in the, the SES, you know, because you fought all around the world, yeah. all these crazy places. Is there one place or one tour in particular that was a really difficult tour for you? I think it was, and I can actually relate to what's happening today. Bosnia, if you, for the younger generation, if you remember what happened in Bosnia, it was just, the hardship about Bosnia was, going over there, it's literally on our doorstep, it's Europe. Going into Europe and seeing the atrocities of what had happened, you know? Trying to get your head around how all these people lived together for so long, then everybody turned on each other, and it was, you know, it was, it was modern day Hitler going on, just like we see today in Ukraine, history repeats itself. So when I got out there, there was three groups of people all fighting with each other and trying to get your head around the political scenario, the situation, trying to do the best to help people. But it was really difficult when you just saw neighbours that lived together for years and they just turned on each other and killed each other. And, it, and then in every war location I've been to, there's a surreal moment. Something just is crazy. And I remember in Bosnia going through a village that had just been cleansed, for a better word, I guess. Smashed, bodies everywhere in the street. And, and right in the middle of this village is a house and a guy washing his car, a BMW. Like, like a, he's like just bizarre. I can still see it now. There's bodies next door. His neighbors are dead on the lawn, just been killed. And, Houses are on fire, and he's just washing his car, and his two kids are running around chasing each other on a bike. And so, when you say that, that's, that, that always stays in my mind, you know. But the other thing that stays in is that how it could actually happen, how that could happen. And that was only in the 90s, 95, 96 onwards. How could how this happen after what we learned from the Second World War with Hitler? But it does, and it's happening right now again, you know. So, that, that always sticks in my mind, how ridiculous and how horrible conflict and war is. And then how does it, so when you see this, you go into these war-torn places, you see dead bodies, women, children, men, whatever, and then mentally that must affect you, right? Yeah. Kind of Doesn't coming it. out of it now, have you had any experience with mental health afterwards, or have you been pretty, no. pretty strong? I'm going to be very honest with you, I mean, I know there's a lot of problems with mental health right now. I've been very fortunate. You know, I have my dark moments, yeah. you know, when a smell, a sound will remind me of something, or just like now talking about it, it's now in my head. Yeah. I don't let it I don't let it dra drag me down. I'll talk about it, I'll think about it, and, you know, by doing that, it allows me to sort of release it. And I'll tell you what my decompression for everything is, fitness. If I feel miserable down, I'll just go out, just go for a run, a jog, a walk, whatever it is, and it just helps me just to settle myself down and just move forward. So I've been very, very fortunate not to have any mental issues at all, you know, but yeah, I think about it, I have dark moments, but I just say to myself, it's done, I can't change it, you've got to move forward. And as tough as that is, you've just got to pick yourself up. You can't sit there in what I call a pity party, because the only person who can drag you out of it is you, because nobody knows what's in your head and your mind, only you. And the fact that if you, you're all good enough to admit it and talk about it, have a cry if you need to have a cry, so what? But you've got to do it, you've got to do that, you can't just sit there and let it all... And that's what's happening today, the guys I've been with, seen the same as I've seen, been in these situations, and they just bottle it up. You can't bottle it up, you've got to do something to decompress, whether it's fitness, talking about it, and there's people out there to help as well, so just don't be afraid to talk about it. But it's never bothered me, yet, I would say. No, I think that's a huge thing, because to me you're one of the most alpha men I've ever met, you've done all these... I mean, you've saved, the, saved us, basically, you know, and for you to be able to be open and talk about it, you know, that gives us all the right to be able to be open and talk about yeah, any issues we're having, because the more we talk about it, we can't get through it. You know, yeah. it's, and like you say, it's up to us, but um, I think that's a, a huge thing, is just to take ownership of ourselves more and not, not look for excuses, not look to, to blame other things. Absolutely, mate. Yeah, exactly. Don't make excuses. And, and again, 
talking about the way the world is today, don't make excuses for people that are making mistakes. Be honest and tell them. Yeah. You know, that's wrong. Don't do that. You know, don't, don't cover up all this. That's what we do today. We're all too scared. The biggest thing we're missing in the world today is the truth. Yeah. We're too scared to tell the truth because we're going to upset somebody. Well, you know what? Life's about getting upset. It's about bouncing back from being upset because that's where you learn your lessons. That's when you grow. When you're uncomfortable, you make mistakes. I always say, you know, you can make a mistake. Just don't keep repeating it. If you repeat it, it's a problem. It's not a mistake anymore, it's a problem. You've got a problem, you need to sort that out. So don't be afraid to make mistakes, but don't, don't lie about it, don't try and cover it up, or be open about it and learn from it. Uh, thank you so much, guys, much appreciated. We'll be on later on, have a good day. Stay spicy, guys, thank you. Enjoy it. Enjoy it, this is an awesome setup, so enjoy it. Thanks for coming.